All right, well, joining me in the studio now is Peter Lynham, head of the School of Social and Cultural Studies at Massey University in Auckland. Peter, thanks for coming in. First of all, what did you make of this list of um, demands, I suppose you'd call it, from Brian Tamaki for his disciples? It's a pretty astounding list. Um, it, in essence, turns the followers into people who've got to frame all of their values by Brian's values. In other words, it's a kind of a hierarchy. And in this strict hierarchy, um, Tamaki is the only person with a direct line to God. And so in your relationships to Tamaki, everything else of your spiritual destiny is decided. So that makes the members of the church entirely dependent upon what Tamaki says. Potentially, how dangerous can that be? Obviously, we're, we're nothing like that here. We're talking about a man with 700 devotees and their new rules. But when you think about David Koresh, Moonies, people like that, that's where it can go, can't it? Yeah, the president is actually very, very clear that the essence of sectarian behaviour is when people have no reference point outside of their movement by which they can measure what's being said. And this is a very significant step, I think, for the movement, lining up with him becoming bishop. But this next stage says that, in effect, to look anywhere else than Brian for the receipt of the word of God is dangerous. Now, you see, if you measured up this behavior by the Bible, which they drag around and thump around, the behaviour that he talks about is entirely inconsistent um, with that, and that's the odd thing about it. It's actually a real Old Testament king authority movement that's going on here. Is he a dangerous man? I think the movement becomes dangerous because it develops an extraordinarily high level of devotion in which it's an unquestioned authority. And remember that there's been a range of political ambitions and extraordinary ideas, and I think that there is a point at which it steps into the dangerous realm. At what point does something move from being a religion and having religious followers to being a cult? I don't feel very comfortable about this word cult because, I mean, we use cult as a kind of slang word mm. to mean something really over the top. The fact is there is no precise point at which you move uh, to a total rejection of other connections. There's been a lot of chiding of Tamaki from within his own Pentecostal world. Many people have been very concerned at the things he said. They are very clearly concerned about this document. I know there's been a good deal of concern expressed. And the general feeling seems to be that somewhere along the line, this is a movement that is now so independent in its outlook that it's framing itself without reference to any other source of authority, and that's the risk, I think. You can't argue, though, he's got a following. He's got some pull within that following. There's a lot of people, and from, from all accounts, it's a fairly well-financed kind of operation. People are getting on board with them, aren't they? Yeah, there's no question about it that the movement has made a difference in South Auckland. And for a lot of the people who've picked up on the movement, you can see that the appeal to a clear, structured world of authority has a great appeal. You know, it's quite interesting because the way in which he emphasises this authority that should be given to him is very similar to what Ratana claimed in the early days of Ratana. Mm. And it's very similar to the way in which Pacific religious leaders are often given this enormous respect. Um, I've been to Pacific functions where I've watched uh, Pacific religious leaders eating first and nobody allowed to do anything until they give the word. And I, I think probably in South Auckland there's something of, of that that explains these steps. This appeared to be, from my reading of it, part of his justification of his stance now with, with Mark tonight on Close Up is that he is similar to other religions, he just doesn't have the history of baptism or Catholicism or whatever, he's just new, that's the only difference. Do you, do you buy into that? Is it just a new thing and we're struggling to buy into it because no. it is new? No, I don't think actually it is new at all. I mean, you look at the way in which he uses the Bible and you look at the, the whole text of this document and the covenant that was agreed. In fact, it's standard sectarian fare. 
in which the leader is exalted to a position above all others, but wants to claim that they're still orthodox and regular. This is a very standard ploy for a sectarian leader. Just finally, he's started his own church. He's made himself a bishop. He's arguably made himself a few bob along the way. From a standing start, could we expect more people to be doing that in New Zealand? Well, this kind of religion has an appeal in a very secular world. Because in a very secular world, you know, it leaves people questing for spiritual values, searching for what they can trust and who they can trust. And, you know, I'm afraid typical ordinary religion is pretty anemic and pretty dull. And therefore the types that tend to appeal are extremist forms. And the trouble is that in extremist forms you have to put a huge faith in the person who offers the extreme. And if they come and they choose to abuse their situation and use it inappropriately, you see, you may not have any point of reference that can help you to sort that point out. All right, Peter, thanks for coming in. Peter Lynham, head of Massey University School of Social and Cultural Studies.